Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps here with another bite-sized breakdown. Today we're going to take a look at Heroic versus Team Liquid and you guessed it, it's the Refresh 1v5. Um, obviously a key point in the series, it's the final map of 1415 and anybody who watched that game knows this round broke Team Liquid. Uh, they completely mentally checked out the game after this one, had no chance going into overtime after they lost this 1v5. Um, we're going to run it from the start of the round just because there are some interesting things to talk about right at the start of the round, particularly this peak from Fallen. Um, I haven't seen this peak done too often on Inferno, uh, and I like it a lot. As you can see, Grim sets up with a flashbang and Fallen jumps on Elysia's head here, tucked behind this little half wall. Um, guaranteed, use this one in your matchmaking, you're going to get some free kills with it. Um, I don't see this peak in my matchmaking games, I'd say that for nothing. Um... When I first saw this round, I actually thought Refresh was trying to bait an orb shot here. I, I genuinely thought it was Giga Brain and that Heroic had seen this from Team Liquid in a demo or something and that Refresh was doing the... Um, if you're not aware, uh, there is something you can do with your model in CSGO where if you whip your knife out and you look down at the ground and you swing your knife, it kind of sticks your elbow up in the air. Like it waves your elbow up around above your head. Um you know, classic stupid CSGO things. Um, but basically, this manipulation of your model can be used to, like, bait peaks from an AWPA. I have seen it used on Inferno to bait shots from the mid AWPA before. Um, but I took a look at the game proper, and Refresh isn't swinging his knife around here. I think he just has his head down because he's just trying to cross um, with his head tucked. I thought it was huge giga brain, though, when I first saw it. Um, kind of sad that that wasn't the case. Right, we're just going to let the round play out. Um, and what you're uh, going to be able to notice here... Um, is that Heroic set up for a super, super simple B execute here. Um, they don't take a lot of time in the round to get uh, any map control. Kadian basically just throws a smoke to sell some sort of presence towards A site. Um, but as you can see, Team Liquid aren't buying it. Um, Elise is already moving towards uh, to play this arch position and Fallen has already started rotating towards B. So Team Liquid have a pretty good idea um, that this is going to be a, uh, a B hit in the rounds and obviously as we can see we get it uh, they get it 100% right. Um, I think the reason Heroic have gone for such a fast B execute is because they're on not a great buy. They have three MAC 10s. I think they've just decided that any sort of slow pay is pointless and probably favoring Team Liquid. So they say, screw it, we're just going to go fast. Uh, we're going to go B, we're going to go fast with lots of nades, and we're going to Mac 10 them in the face. A moment in the game that I want to point out, which really emphasizes the fact that Counter Strike can be a game where a few pixels and one very brief moment makes the difference. If we take a look here. This is just after that mid-peak from Fallen. That peak actually catches Refresh and does 13 points of damage to him. That is a couple of pixels away from Fallen getting the kill. And if Fallen gets that kill, the round plays out completely differently. I can't even tell you for certain that Team Liquid win that round if Refresh dies there, because maybe Heroic plays slightly differently, maybe Liquid plays slightly differently. The whole round could basically turn on this one moment and it's also a moment to emphasize don't be too harsh on team liquid yes they lost a 1v5 where they made some mistakes and it ended up costing them the series but if there's a few pixels of difference here fallen gets that opening pick and i would say it's likely the team liquid win the round right so we'll come over to b site and we'll just let this hit play out as you can see fallen gets in position in ct ready and waiting for uh the t's to start crossing into b site Nat and stewie have got a great hold at the back of the site nice and passive beautiful crossfire with fallen this is um 100 around in liquid's favor they should be very comfortable on this b take I like the spacing from Starvin and Shush here, by the way. Going in as the entry pair, um, they have opportunities to refrag. Obviously, it doesn't happen. They both get taken out pretty quickly. Um, and there's not a lot that they can do there. Not much they did wrong. Um, Stu and Fallen both just hit their shots, and they happen to walk through a molly as well, which wasn't great timing. Now, as you can see, the hit plays out a bit more. Everyone dies. Kadian goes B hopping around. Blam. Right. Everyone is dead. Now, this is where the 1v5 starts. So we will get in nice and close near refresh to take a look at what happens here now the first fight um nothing on fallen here right with any 1v5 that is successful obviously for the one person um the team of five has to have made some sort of mistakes 
I think you could go through the history of CSGO and there wouldn't be a single 1v5 that didn't have some sort of mistake from the team that's on the end of the 1v5. Um, and this first peak from Fallen, this isn't the mistake. Like, Fallen's holding the angle. Um, he gets beaten by refresh in a duel. Um, as he's sort of slightly repositioning, I think if you can see here, Fallen is creeping forwards on his angle and refresh headshots him. Headshots him. Um, nothing wrong with Fallen's play there. It happens. Um, now, the next peak that we will... Oh, dearie me. It's taking me back in the timeline. Now, the next peak that we're about to see from a leash, um, as you can see, he's about to come bounding through your smoke. This is a mistake. Now... As you can see, he comes barreling through the smoke there and has no chance to win that duel against Refresh. Refresh is literally staring at him. Um, the reason that mistake or that play, sorry, is a mistake from Elige is literally because of this smoke on front site. Um, if this smoke is not here and the players on the site have an unobstructed line of vision to Refresh, that's not a mistake from Elige. He can say, I'm pushing the smoke. The two at the back of the site can peek out and refresh is dead. The only reason that play is a mistake from Elige is because of this smoke that is at the front of site. It's not an inherent mistake by Elige to come running through the smoke as long as he communicates it. Now, it's tough to pin the blame there. You could say potentially the site players need to be communicating that there's a smoke here. Um, maybe Elige needs to be asking, like, you know, can I run through the smoke? Is this a play that we can do? Um, or maybe even the info was there and Elise made the play anyway, in which case it was a mistake. But the key thing to note is it's, Elise running through the smoke is not an issue per se. The issue is because there's a smoke here, there's just no refrag potential. That's the main problem. I just want to highlight two really important ways that refresh gives himself a lot of chances in this clutch. First off, using that smoke at the front of site to isolate and clear out certain angles. Part of the reason I think Nath and Stewie play so passive and scared at the back of site, obviously, is to wait for Grimm's rotate. But another reason is because the way Refresh is using that smoke to keep Liquid guessing about exactly where he is and to give him the chance to clear out and isolate angles. It's really nice play from Refresh. Another point, which is about to follow on very quickly from this, is how quickly Refresh gets up in Nath and Stewie's face he makes sure that the time is not going to become a factor against him. He doesn't give Liquid chances to clear out angles themselves, get themselves set up feeling nice and comfortable, give Grim time to rotate. Refresh tries to pick up the pace from this point and get in Liquid's face a little bit. These are two ways in which Refresh gave himself every chance of winning this clutch, and he deserves a huge amount of credit. Now, Naf runs to the new box here so that him and Stewie can set up a crossfire and trade. The only problem is they then don't really properly set up a crossfire. If we come to new boxes here and emo, and we just go above them, and we just hit the old glassify, this is kind of the easiest way to see the like mistakes that, that Nath and Stewie make here. So, right, so Stewie, rather than being tucked all the way into dark, um, there is a smoke there currently. That smoke is there because Stewie uh, received a molly at his feet and he put it out. Um, so Stewie's playing slightly forward on the angle, which is slightly unfavorable. It is better if Nath and Stewie are trying to play this crossfire for Stewie to be tucked all the way in dark. Just because it makes for nicer angles crossfiring. Now, I think here, I'm not sure why Liquid, Nath and Stewie aren't set up in a crossfire just like this. Just keep it nice and simple. Have Stewie watching this side of the site so Naf can't get walked up on his, well, his right, left as we're looking at it. And Naf just watches towards coffins, towards graveyard, and watches this side of the site for the walk up. I'm not really sure why they don't do this. Naf is kind of like... So he's doing it at the moment, and then he, he stops for a reason. I, I can't comprehend why Naf stopped watching this angle. I don't, I don't know why he feels the need to start looking towards the right-hand side. Is that not an angle that Stewie's going to hold? Stewie, so Stewie just dies holding nothing. I think the intention from Liquid here was to set up really passive at the back of the site and wait for Grimm's rotate, but it's just overly passive. They don't need to do this, and they give Refresh a chance to get back into the round here. I understand and don't necessarily disagree with the idea of playing passive so that Grimm can rotate and turn it into a 3v1, but it's already a 2-on-1, and by playing so passive, they're giving Refresh so much room and space to work with to make the clutch happen. Um... Combine that with the poor crossfire they hold. I'm not really sure what Naf's doing. 
to be honest. I think he should just be disciplined and holding this angle. Um, let me just draw that for you one more time. I think he needs to just be disciplined and holding this angle. Um, I'm not really sure what he's doing, kind of fidgeting in new box. It looks like somebody who's nervous, to be honest, um, about the prospect of getting 1v5. Um, Stewie dies holding nothing. I'd need to have a look at that angle from the first person view of Refresh and Stewie to 100% tell you exactly what happened in that angel. But Stewie's got the right eye peak advantage here. It looked like he was just not holding anything. Um, maybe he was slightly obscured by the smoke. I'm not sure. Um, so I'm not going to comment too much on that right now. But it did look a little bit of a weird one for Stewie to just get headshot when he's got right eye advantage. I'm not really sure what happened there. But Naf loses this one to the footsteps or whatever again i'd need to see that one from naf's personal point of view on the demo um because it seems like he got his sound cues a little messed up there because refresh started running and he peeks to the right side of the side when refresh is much closer i'm not sure maybe he thought refresh was further away maybe he thought stewie had kind of died from like back here rather than where refresh was i'm not 100 percent certain but either way that's another lost jewel and we have the final 1v1. Now, there's not really too much to talk about in this final 1v1. Um, neither player plays it incorrectly. You know, Reflash playing for info here, seeing if he can figure out where Grim is. He does figure out where Grim is, which is um, important for Refresh. I think if we want to talk about the rest of the clutch and talk about anything important, it's probably getting that piece of information that's the most important for Refresh, because now he has some idea of where Grim is coming from, where Grim can be playing from, and it puts the 1v1 on a relatively even footing. Grim has the better weapon, and Grim has slightly more HP, and Grim has a kit, so these are all advantages in Grim's favor. But Refresh getting that information, that was kind of the final thing Grim had going for him, in that Refresh didn't know for certain whether he was pushing from Banana or whether he was rotating from CT. So I guess that's the final kind of point of interest on the clutch, I think. Grim puts down a nice molly. I'm not sure why Refresh gets caught in that this molly, but he does. He takes a bit more damage. Um... But what we're going to see now is we just see Refresh pick up the bomb, plant, and just win a gunfight with Grim. Um, I think Grim will be disappointed not to have won this gunfight. He knows exactly where Refresh was planting from, but, you know, Refresh hits the headshot with the AK. Not much you can talk about there. Just to quickly recap then the points from that 1v5 that I think are important. First death, uh, which is on Fallen, um, I don't think any blame can be put on fallen he's holding an angle he gets killed it happens um at least coming through the smoke in ct not necessarily a mistake per se but is a mistake when you bear in mind this smoke and the lack of any refrag potential from the two players on site then the players on site just give refresh way too much respect here i understand that they're waiting for grim's rotate to make it a 3v5 it seems like a really super sensible and safe way to play this 1v3 but actually if anything i think it just gives refresh more chances to take room take space and to make a play stewie loses a weird fight here not sure why he wasn't holding the angle it looked like he thought he was tucked not 100 percent certain stewie and naf's crossfire not the best i think naf needs to be holding more disciplined towards the sort of coffin and graveyard angle refresh again deserves a lot of credit for the way he plays for information here the final piece of the puzzle for refresh i think in putting this clutch together is finding that information on grim um, and I'm not going to criticize Grim too much here, but he probably himself will be disappointed that he lost the final duel against Refresh. He has a better gun. He knows exactly where Refresh is because he is implanting and he's got HP on Refresh. So I want to thank you all for watching this video, guys. Um, remember, if you've got any comments, if you've got any suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, and if you don't like it, don't watch. See you later, guys.